Hey, I'm shaved and I'm ready to talk. Uh, thanks for all the comments um, below my last video on YouTube about uh, me talking in front of the camera. It really helped to uh, sort out some things and I think a mixture of all the formats I've done in the past are pretty nice. So me talking about topics around musical stuff and um, showing things inside Bitwig, creating presets and talking about it. And I think it's pretty interesting to combine all the stuff. And um, I want to create a video every day, which will be pretty hard, but um, I try it anyway. Uh, but let's see how that's going in the future. <clears throat> yeah, I started the song inside Bitwig beta version 3.0 and I didn't use the grid for that. I basically just used all the instruments and stuff you could use uh, in uh, Bitwig 2.5. And I think I know the reason why. Um, because the grid is basically something like a black hole. It draws you in and then you experiment two hours, fiddle around two hours, three hours, and you can't get anything done at all, track-wise or song-wise. When I want to create a track or start a song, I usually want to have all my samples, all my presets ready to go track everything into the DAW and um, yeah, switch stuff around and want to actually create a song structure, right? But when I am using the grid, it's basically infinity possibilities, infinite possibilities, and um, it sucks you in, you try new stuff and yeah, you come out two hours later, nothing, nothing done at all. And um, yeah, I think the grid is pretty great for actually creating instruments that are not available inside Bitwig at the moment. Whereas I, um, I'm not sure if the grid is actually possible at the moment to create pretty much something that's not available right now inside Bitwig. So for instance, you can uh, create Bitwig 2.5 with some uh, with some with the grand modular uh, semi modular system, you can create pre uh, reverbs, you can create loopers, and you can create rhythmic stuff. Yeah, it's not that advanced, but also at the same time, the grid itself is not that advanced enough so that you have um, all the possibilities you, you know a VST developer has. And at the same time, uh, the grid is made for musicians. It looks at least that way. Um, I can open yeah, um, a preset I made. It's a reverb. I created the reverb. And it's pretty easy to access. Um, um, the coloring is nice. The interface is nice. The workflow is nice. And if when you play around five minutes, you get how everything works and why. And uh, if you know, base, have a basic understanding of how a synth works and how um, an effects work, then you can lay down these things for yourself inside the grid. But if you actually want to create advanced stuff, you need very advanced knowledge of all the things. Um, so for instance, in this case here, I created the reverb and you can see I used a lot of all pass um, uh, delays, all pass filters, uh, where I delay the left channel and the right channel and uh, about certain amounts differently. And you have to know that when you want to create a reverb, at least you need some kind of all pass filters and you need a feedback loop. Uh, so, you, so you have to know a certain, uh, you need a, a certain level of understanding of how the things work, right? So um, you need knowledge. And that's pretty hard actually to, to know for yourself. So you have a musical access, you can create basic stuff, but then when you want to advance in more complexer stuff, you need a lot of more knowledge. Because it's, it's, it's like a visual, visual programming language, right? And you, you have to know your stuff um, to create actually great things. And I, for myself, I'm not a developer. I'm not a VST developer. 
I know some stuff, but not everything. Uh, I know how a filter works, but there are some neat tricks you need to know to create nice, nice things, right? So um, in this case here, I created the reverb and this is how it sounds without. And as you can see, I used this um, macro knob here and I modulated this value button here, this value uh, module. And this value module goes into this modulator out module. It's called modulator out. And from there, you can modulate all the different parameters in the grid. And I used this to um, change the value of the delay um, on the all pass devices slightly differently, though they are not even um, modulated. And when I raise this or turn this knob here down, then all the delay signals change. This is actually a problem I see where you don't see what kind of modulations are applied at the moment. I think that's coming in the next beta versions. But um, you have to see what, uh, what kind of stuff you modulate when you actually modulate it or use the macro knobs. So I can't see. I, I see that I modulate the value here, but then from there, from there I don't know which way everything uh, flows, right? So in this case, I used the uh, audio in. So this is the sound from the polysynth. This goes into this spread device or stereo split device. And the left channel goes into this first all pass here. And then from there uh, to another and to another. So basically um, there are a lot of all pass devices change. Then I go to another delay uh, where I delay the signal uh, with a certain amount of time. And there is a stereo merge module where I combine the left and the right all pass chains. And this goes into a mixer where I have the output routed to a long delay. And this long delay goes to a high pass and low pass and then goes back to an all pass and again into the same mixer where I can uh, basically adjust the feedback. When you have a delay, uh, you need the feedback where the sound loops in a loop. Right, so you have a feedback uh, loop. And then you can steer this with the knob here, basically to have a longer delay. And this is not a special setup. This is basically uh, made with my ears. So I think that that sounds good to my ears. So um, that's what created this graph, basically. So there's no special algorithm or something I I use to create this. So one tip I can give you is when you don't know what a device actually does, then try to use display devices here. Um, for instance, this oscilloscope here. And you can see here the sound goes in and here it goes out. And route the actual source signal into one of the inputs of this uh, oscilloscope and then route the output into the other input and then you can see what actually changes because you have to the source the input and the output laid onto each other right so this is basically the input and the output of the all pass when everything is set to zero i think i have the size basically down to, to zero and the value here is, is, to, is on zero and this should be on zero i think so 
this is basically there's no change or no significant change. So that way you can compare the input and the output signal and you can get a hang on what the device actually does. So another tip I want to give you is actually try to install the factory presets for the grid. So go to your uh, dashboard and packages, essentials collection and then um, there's a button here with install the factory device presets or update it. And then you get these nice uh, presets. And if I load the FX grid here, you have a lot of um, presets where you can open the presets and actually learn from the preset. So you can see how a reverb works and there are also um, comments inside. So it's nice to have that and learn from the already made presets. Um, here are some preset I created for myself and um, this is a small looper device. And yeah, these presets, this looper preset and the other reverb preset is actually uh, in my GitHub repository, so you can download that and use it in the beta version right now. And um, yeah, you can see I also commented all the stuff. That's actually another tip I want to give you. Always comment your code or your crafts. So you know in two months what you actually thought about this craft or why you created it. And when other persons uh, or your friends open up the patches and they can instantly see uh, what you're thinking more. And yeah, you can see here I have, an, I have a small looper device with the recorder uh, built inside the grid. And I use the transport device here. And the transport device gives out this phase uh, signal. And this phase signal goes from 0 to 1. And I have this constant here, which uh, has a value of 0 0.99. And with this module, I check if the phase actually exceeds uh, the value of 0 0.99, which is at the end of the phase, basically, as you can see here. And every time the phase is at the end, it's bigger than 0 0.99. And then it goes into this not module, which turns a, a 0 into a yes. So basically the recorder plays all the time. Only at the end from the phase, it stops and re-triggers again. So it plays from the start again. Okay. And this is basically a pretty simple setup, but you need, you get some you need to have some knowledge about uh, logic and try to get your head around logic because it's it's a bit of programming uh, programming um, a graph so yeah that's a tip R always comment your code so you know exactly what's happening so I want to close down this video at this point because it's already uh, pretty long but that's exactly my uh, point of the intro um, if you start with the grid, you go, you come out two hours later with nothing done at all or something, some experiments done at all. So it's nice. <laughs> and uh, but I initially want, wanted to show you this track I made inside, uh, inside Bitwig Studio. But when I started this track and laid down all the tracks here, you can see I came down to this track where I started to create an FX grid and that's actually where I ended the session, um, the session, the creation session basically because I got lost in the FX grid. But um, yeah, maybe I show you the track tomorrow actually. That's a pretty nice easy um, starter for tomorrow. Yeah, until tomorrow, I, I, that's it for this video. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching and yeah, leave some comments and some critiques and some likes and some dislikes and uh, go to my GitHub repository, download the presets, try it out and um, I see you tomorrow. Bye.